Hey everyone, we're back at the desk, baby. We're in a standard show video for you guys because I have some interesting news for you. This is the first real evidence that, uh, yeah, there is a new switch related SOC system on a chip, a new chip for the Nintendo Switch in the works. This isn't a rumor. This isn't a, um, there's going to be some speculation, I suppose, but it's not a rumor, guys. This isn't even coming from Bloomberg or anything like that. We have actual evidence you can look at for yourself and see that, yeah, we're getting something eventually or something. Now, before I get into this video, I got to remind you of Into the AM. That's what one of the shirt right here. Um, I wear these shirts every single day. I swear. They are amazing. They are soft. They are comfortable. They are pre-shrunk. This is just a basic maroon color tee. They have a lot of other colors as well, along with printed tees and all of that jazz. If you're interested in getting one, some of these shirts for yourself, they are a premium quality, whatever that means, premium service. Our E3 people know what we're talking about there. Uh, yeah, if you would like to get one of these, head to intotheam.com slash Nintendo Prime 10. There's a link at the top of the description. Oh, by the way, that link gives you 10% off. I don't know why. Why do I always get to remind people that Nintendo Prime 10, the whole point is 10% off? Duh. All right, so we're talking about information that comes from the Switch hacking and data mining community. This is verifiable information. We'll have all of the links to the sources down in the description. It's really coming from a couple places, uh, but we know you know some of the actual data miners uh, in here, uh, including you know, like Mike Heskin and Scryers M and some others. Uh, but this is some real information. Some of this we've known for a little bit and haven't talked about. And some of it has come to light quite recently, such as on June 10th. So looking at my notes here, um, the Switch Hacking and Data My Community has uncovered a lot of interesting things, including a picture of the T234 on Wikipedia, which this might not mean anything to you. It's a chip. That's fine. Copite 7KIMI states plainly that a new Switch will use a customized version known as T239. He said this on June 10th. Now, what is this? Basically, it's a new system on a chip. The problem so far is we didn't necessarily have any proof that this system on a chip for the Switch was even being used internally or really on any new system on a chip. So not Merco, not Tegra X1, but a new one. We haven't had any definitive proof of this. However, recent data dubs of current Switch OS and kernels show something really interesting, and this is noted um, by Mike Heskin. The system call space has been extended from 128 possible SFVCs to 192. This is proven, it's identifiable, and can be looked at for yourself down in the description. This isn't a rumor, this is literally inside the current Switch kernel and OS, and wasn't there before. So that's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo. What the hell does any of it mean? Well, here's the important stuff that it means, because we don't need to get into the possibilities, because obviously we don't know the possibilities till we see the chip. But here's the fundamental aspect of what this means. There is some sort of SOC that's needed that increases SVC, which is well beyond any of the known Tegra Mariko SOCs and what they need. So that 192 is not something that a Tegra X1 of any type actually needs. All right. There is something somewhere using that kernel and OS in a way that the current chips and sides, which are incapable of doing as in, there's actually a new system on a chip factually existing somewhere at Nintendo and in the development pipeline, maybe with developers right now, etc. Factually, a new chip that is not Tegra X1 inside a Switch exists somewhere. What this SOC is, of course, is a mystery, but with this factual data available, it seems to be the first real indicator that a new chip exists, whereas all other prior available data suggested that if a Pro were to come, it would be the Alula type, which is a Morico based chipset. Uh, so yeah, it would just be like improved clock speeds with your OLED screen and your 4K upscaling, maybe through the M Classic style way of doing things. But now we have definitive evidence that a different chip, a new chip exists. We have not had evidence of this ever. All evidence we've ever had pointed to just another Tegra X1 platform. Of course, we don't know what that chip is and speculation for the longest time was that Nintendo cannot use anything post current Tegra such as the X2, which is an upgraded version as well, or even beyond, because every game would need to be recompiled to run it. This is a fundamental issue that people have worried about with a Switch Pro. You use newer technology, 
how the hell is it going to be backwards compatible? Because that can be quite difficult to do because the technology is pretty different. The architecture is fairly different. However, as the astute tech enthusiast noted, that's not necessarily true. And there are ways you can still run current games in modes within newer technology, where the code still sees everything as a Morico chip, where you can later update the game to unlock support for rumored Switch features like DLSS, 4K, and yes, taking advantage of that newer technology, increased frame rates, all that jazz. Think of how in Windows and PCs, uh, you can run programs like you know, in Windows 98 mode, in Windows 7, in Windows Vista mode, etc. Despite the kernel and everything else tech-wise inside current platforms being fundamentally different than what was running those programs back in the day like 1998. Hello, MS-DOS. You can still run games in that as well. That's what's very interesting about this technology is obviously backwards compatibility is a concern, but also is it really a concern? I think a lot of the concern around it is not knowing how Nintendo would handle backwards compatibility, but there's obviously options. Now, here's what we need to talk about when we're talking about this particular chip, this particular news. It's that we do know now that a new chip of some type in some sort of switch exists because there's references to it now inside the OS and the kernel of the platform. The problem is we don't know what the chip is. We don't know, uh, you know, is this the Orin chip, right? Now, there's been a lot of talk about Orin. If you don't know what it is, you can go look it up. It's basically newer technology. It might even be based on Lovelace, which is like next-gen technology, which would be absolutely insane to see that inside a Switch. But um, this also can't be ignored that this new chip could mean next gen we we can't say that this is definitively the pro when it could also be for a next gen switch it's possible there'll be multiple generations of switch it's also possible there might never be a next gen switch it could just be a pro and then another like another switch comes out in two or three years and they just keep it all one family of systems like phones I, I, I again this is all in the territory of speculation but what we definitively know today that we did not know yesterday or at least didn't know if you weren't paying attention is that there is a new chip factually in existence and being referenced by the os and kernel in a very specific way what this new chip is what its capabilities are we don't know is this the chip is this the platform that's going to end up being what switch pro is is it is Alula, which we have a lot of information on, even ever going to come out. Alula, by the way, is basically a Tegra X1 beefed up a little bit, so increased clock speeds, um, with 4K support added in the dock, uh, and yeah, an OLED panel or something like that, a bigger screen. Okay, that's what we know, but we also don't know that Alula is ever coming out. The big thing about Alula, for those that have followed this train for a long time behind the scenes, is that we have zero evidence Alula was ever in production. What's important to note is that we need to separate facts from predictions, facts from uh, opinions. And you're going to find multiple data miners and all that other that will tell you factually, we are going to get Alula. It's in mass production and it's coming out. But they don't know that. What they know is that it exists. The facts are the facts. The opinions are the opinions. I'm not going to throw any data miner or leaker under the bus, but I will say that there's only two things we definitively know at this point about potential new platforms. At one point, there was a system in development that rocked 4K in some sort of way, had a 4K output at least from the dock, uh, had an OLED screen, and was using a Tegra X1 chip. All right, we know this factually. It is in all of the data mines. It is in the OS and prior kernels. We are well aware that this platform codenamed Alula existed. We don't know that that platform was ever in production, but we know it existed. We now know, based on new data mines, based on new kernels, based on new OS updates, that there is now a new chip in production, or at least being used somewhere behind the scenes in a switch. What that chip is capable of, that we don't know. Is it Orin? Is it, does it use Lovelace? Is it you know, a, a whole bunch of different possible technologies. We don't know, but we know that it exists somewhere, just like we know Alula exists somewhere. Which one's coming out? Which one's the pro? Is one the pro and one next gen? Are neither gonna happen? 
Are they just experimenting and playing around with different models and different types of things behind the scenes to try to figure out if there's anything they want to do with Switch moving forward? I don't know. I don't have the answers to any of this. What I do know is we have reports from places like Takahashi Machizuki at Bloomberg and Tom Phillips at Eurogamer collaborating that, hey, look, this device, some sort of new Switch device is coming out in September or October. We also have, obviously, a killer lineup of games in 2022 that I don't think need a Switch Pro to necessarily give us all they can be, but it sure wouldn't hurt to have, say, 60 FPS in the sequel to Breath of the Wild or 60 FPS in Pokemon Legends Arceus, let alone increased resolution through DLSS, which is what Takashi Machizuki claims it can do. And if it is doing it through DLSS, then it has to be obviously be newer technology that can support that. And then how expensive would that be? And then what happens in the trickle down to the OG switch and the switch Lite? I don't have answers to any of this. What we now know factually, the Alula platform with a Mariko existed behind the scenes at some point. And now a platform that has a new SOC of some point exists behind the scenes. That's it. That's the news. What we do with that from that point forward is all speculation. So what is the Switch Pro? I'm not sure we know any more today than we did yesterday, but we now know there's more possibilities for it today than we did yesterday. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. Let me know your guesses down in the comments on what the new SOC is. Do you think this is what's in the Pro? Do you think Alula is? Do you think either of these are in mass production? Do you think the Pro is fake entirely and all of this is just talks about next gen? Let me know because this stuff is facts. These are facts. This is not speculation. This is not a rumor. These things are identifiable, verifiable. Any of you guys can go look it up right now. The question is, what becomes of all of it? And that is the, the, the larger point that we really don't know. Now, before I end this video, I want to give a shout out to Alex. Uh, he has been one that's been helping me decipher all of this stuff behind the scenes through Twitter DMs. I want to thank you so much, Alex, for your hard work there. Uh, I also want to thank, obviously, all of our data miners out there, the, the Scryers M's, uh, the, uh, what was his name? Uh, Copite 7K IMI. I uh, also want to thank uh, uh, the Mike guy, Mike Heskins, and all the others out there who do this kind of work really for nothing other than their own curiosity. Uh, I also want to thank, obviously, people who end up getting die shots and all that. I know that's not always the most easiest thing to do when you don't have access to all of the necessary equipment to do it. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in uh, because without an audience, I'd be, be talking to an empty room, which technically, <laughs> this room's empty right now. So, I, I am? Is this Inception? Am I Am I here right now? Is this Is this is, is this like an, an alternate universe? Why am I why, why do I have a suit jacket? When did, when the hell did I get this? What the hell is this? I I What's happening? Why? No! Ah!